Warning, the following video contains super awesome effects that can be done using free softwares. Uh, alrighty, today you're gonna learn how to make this sliding clone effect, and I don't care if you had plans, cancel them, this is way more important. Now in this video, you're gonna learn how to record the footage you need, stabilize the footage you have, speed ramp your video, rotoscope anything, and animate objects. So, without a further ado do, let's Even though we're going to be stabilizing our footage later, it's important to record something as stable as possible. The shakier the footage, the weirder it's going to look. Maybe that's what you're going for, but I HIGHLY recommend getting a gimbal. Now don't worry if you can't afford one, most phone cameras have some sort of stabilization built into it, so all you gotta do is perfect your gimbal walk. <laughs> now when you're recording, you wanna keep your subject as centered as possible. A little sway isn't going to hurt you, but too much is going to ruin the quality of your video when you go to stabilize it. This is why I recommend getting multiple shots so that way you can pick the best one later on. Now speaking of the subject, it's important to have them stand out from the background. This is going to help you later on when you go to rotoscope them. So if you can, use contrasting colors. Now with that being said, go out and film something. Walk towards your subject, walk away from your subject, even walk around them. Get creative! Alright, you got your footage, you're inside of DaVinci Resolve, now it's time to stabilize it, so let's jump right on into Fusion. Now if you're unfamiliar with node-based workflows, I'll give you a crash course. It's a side quest. So, Media In 1, that's our video, and Media Out 1 is our video with all the effects applied to it. So, if I were to place a color corrector node in between them, and crank it to green, guess what? Green gets applied to the video. This is basically layers just turned on its side. Hey, would you look at that? We have our video, a color correction applied to it, and then this is what it looks like. Anyways, stabilizing. Hit shift space to bring up the select tool page, and then you're gonna type in tracker. We just want the plain old tracking node and just add that into the pipeline. So you probably noticed we got this box right here and if we hover over it, more stuff appears over it, alright? This smaller one, that's how you move it around. The solid box, that's what we're tracking. And then this dotted one on the outside is the search area for the thing that we're tracking. Now in order to get a good track, we want to place this on a high contrast area. So you could use the eyes or the nose. And we gotta change a few settings before we get started. First of all, adaptive mode. We're gonna change it from none to best match. And then we're gonna bring our match tolerance down to about 0.5. You could probably get away with the default settings, but I always like to do this. And if you're starting at the beginning of your video, just track forwards. But if you're starting somewhere in the middle, you're gonna wanna track from current time and then track forwards and backwards. Once you've tracked your entire video, you should have all these little dots, and those are all the tracking points. We just gotta change one more setting in order to stabilize our video, so we're gonna go over to Operation. Now we're gonna change it from None to Match Move, and then Merge. We're gonna change it from Foreground over Background to Foreground Only. I mean Background Only! Watch what happens when we play this. Charmander's nose is staying dead center of the canvas. And you'll notice we got these checkered parts right here. Well, we have all these blank spots and that's not gonna look good. A simple fix is to drop in a transform node. You can find it in the hot bar right here. Place it after the tracker and just zoom in until those uh, uh, checkered marks go away. You might have to do it a couple of times, but you know, it's pretty good. Look at this. Perfectly uh, stabilized. Charmander is dead center, and we get this uncanny look to it. All right, you got your video stabilized. Now it's time to speed ramp it. 
we're in the edit tab right now and i'm just gonna make this so you can see it a little bit easier so all we got to do is right click our clip and then read time controls you could also use control r and then you see this drop down arrow next to 100 percent hit that all you have to do is add a speed point and now we have this little thingy right here and you just drag it one way or another if we drag it to the left our clip gets sped up if we drag it to the right our clip gets slowed down personally i think it looks best to have something crazy fast like a thousand percent if not higher and it only needs to last a couple of frames whoa now this is okay but we're going from two thousand percent speed and then right here we just go to 100 percent speed so it's kind of this hard stop and it doesn't really look all that good but we can fix that once again right click and then retime curve this will bring up the graph for your your speed ramp and you see this point right here it's below our speed point hey hey you just click it and these two buttons right here this is for a linear and this is for a smooth uh thing you have these two dots you drag it out now instead of a hundred percent stop right here we have this gradual slowdown and this looks way smoother i mean check that out you see that difference now there's one more secret sauce that we have to add to this to make it look perfect and that is motion blur because when things move faster they have more blur on them uh all we have to do is we go to our toolbox effects adjustment clip bam now what i like to do is uh i'll find where this ends and i'll place my place uh, place my playhead here and then just trim the adjustment clip hovering over the adjustment clip open up fusion and then you're gonna add these two nodes so shift space optical flow once again shift space vector motion blur and there you go now say you have a little too much motion blur like this is just too smeared we don't like it well in vector motion blur we can just bring down the scale and that will reduce the amount of motion blur you have and there you go you just speed ramped your first clip F yeah now we can do the not so fun part rotoscoping or cutting out our subject or masking whatever you want to call it we gotta remove the background here and there's a few different ways that we can do it i'm gonna show you three really two and a half ways because i'm not gonna cover the third way all that much but i thought it would be important to tell you about it so version number one is going to be the classic way of doing it first of all what we need to do is duplicate this clip right here so i'm just gonna bring adjustment clip into video track number three and then i'm gonna hold left alt left click and drag it into video track number two open up the color tab just like in fusion this is a node based workflow what we need to do is add an alpha output so we can have a transparent background so right click the grid add alpha output next take that blue square thingy connected to the blue circle thingy that's also a rectangle there you go so what you're gonna want to do is head on over to your power window and this is how we can mask things now, I think it's good to start either at the beginning or the end of your clip. You've just stabilized it. The tracking is going to be pretty straightforward. And what I'm going to do is select the curves tool. Now, all you got to do is click and uh, you'll start making a mask. I'm not going to go super crazy with this because it's just the tutorial. Um, but, you know, take your time. Okay, so you'll see uh, right here our little preview window has changed and we can actually see what it looks like by hitting this button right here bam that's what our mask looks like so we got to track it in uh next to your power window there's the tracker window all you got to do track forwards and backwards Wah! now for the most part this will do a pretty good job i mean like it, it got a little weird towards the end but you can see it sticks pretty well and we can clean this up all you got to do is change it from clip to frame. You'll notice we have two little dots right here. Those are the keyframes. So let's start at the end. Or I mean the beginning. And we're just going to adjust the mask to fit a little bit better. And the reason why is because DaVinci Resolve will do all the heavy lifting and adjust all the other frames so that it matches this first keyframe. And that way you don't have to keyframe every 
frame. I feel like I'm saying frame too much. Two hours later. So it sticks a little better. The only problem is, you know, right here towards the end of the speed ramp, it gets a little funky. So we can add some keyframes by just adjusting the mask to fit a little bit better. And you'll notice this area right here, there's another little white dot, and that means we've added another keyframe. So anytime you adjust your mask, it's going to add a keyframe. Now this method is okay for simple rotoscopes or simple masks, but for more complex ones, it can be really time consuming. If only there was a way to automate the process, perhaps take advantage of AI technology. Guys, there is a way. I'm using sarcasm. There is a website called Runway ML and you can do a lot of cool things there. Now, before we head over there, we got to render this in place. So we have something to bring over to Runway. So right click, guess what? Render in place. Okay, so go to runwayml.com. You're gonna create your first project and you wanna choose green screen. Upload your video and then you're gonna take it and drop it into the timeline. Now all you gotta do is make a couple dots here. Runway's gonna do its thing and it's gonna cut out your subject for you. And then look, I'm gonna hit preview. All this green, that's what it rotoscoped. You can see there's a, a little bit of weirdness like right there. You can clean it up. Mode, include, we're gonna go to exclude. Make a dot, it cleaned it up. Once you're done, hit done masking and it's going to show you a preview of what exactly your video is going to look like. Now, if you're getting ahead of me, you probably went to export and you're like, Dax, what's going on? You got to upgrade for a 1080p version. You said this could be done for free. Yeah, you can export the 720p version and I'm going to show you how to upscale it in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, we got to rearrange our timeline so it looks something like this. So I'm going to highlight these two right here, drag it up one video track and then i'm gonna place the green screen video underneath so it should be in video track number two now what we're gonna do is highlight video track number three and two right click new fusion clip and open up fusion okay so i hate the way da vinci sets this up this top video would be the one that's showing except it's not if i hit one on my keyboard it's gonna bring it into this window that's the green screen video we place it beneath this video so really we gotta go like that. And the way I know this too is because if we hover over these arrows, look, we got background, we got foreground, and we also got mask. We're gonna use that mask one later. And I'm gonna turn off media in two. It's this video right here. It's the 1080p high quality HD. Uh, just turn it off. You can go to the inspector. You see this button, click it, turn it off. So in between media in one, our green screen video and this merge, we have to add a delta keyer to get rid of all this green. So shift space, delta keyer. All you gotta do, take the eyedropper, place it on the green. Now there's a little bit of a color shift here and Charmander's tummy is a little transparent. Not a big deal though. While I have Delta Keyer selected, I'm gonna hit one on my keyboard. And up here, this is the color viewer. I'm gonna actually change this to alpha it's basically a map it's an old school way of rotoscoping things all of the dark parts of the image get cut out and you're left with all this now all these gray tones are transparent which is why charmander's little tum tum looking a little see-through so we gotta fix this luckily it's really easy to do go over to the mat setting and just like bring down the threshold maybe bring up the threshold and you just go until you have no more gray parts and it's just a black and white image now what we can do is get this 720p video looking crispy cream it's really it's really simple remember this is a mat and we have a mask uh arrow Thing. Take the output of your Delta Cure, connect it to the mask, and make sure you turn on Media In 2. Boom! Look at that high definition. Huh? And, and look at this when I play everything back. We got a rotoscope Charmander. Now at this point, you have your video rotoscoped, so you could render it in place. So right click, render in place. Now you want to change the codec from DNX HD to DNX HR, so you have that transparent background. 
Now I know what you're saying. What is this mysterious uh third two and a half way? Well, it's actually inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's only with the studio version. We hit shift space, you have a tool called Magic Mask, and it does the same thing that Runway does. It's AI rotoscoping. So I'm just gonna squiggle some stuff like this. That's way too many squiggles. This is not a sponsored segment. Not a lot of people know that DaVinci Resolve has this capability. So I thought I would tell you. Okay. So you, you got your roto video. Let's duplicate it. Highlight all three videos. Right click, new fusion clip. Open up fusion. Once again, this is a mess, so I'm just gonna drag them out like this. These are our two, our, 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 our. these are the two roto videos. Look, roto video one, roto video number two. Why did we make two copies? Well, it's because if I turn this one off and then I animate this one, it sits on top and we want it to sit below. Okay, so we gotta make Charmander slide and that's really easy to do. All we have to do is drop in a transform node under media in two. We're gonna add a keyframe to the center, go to the end of the video, and we're gonna make this something crazy like 10.5. Now you want it to end with 0.5 so that way it gets brought back to the center. But if we play this video back, a uh, bit of an issue. Charmander just kind of like flew off the screen. So we gotta fix that. We gotta duplicate him. And it's really easy to do in that transform node. Edges, change it from canvas to wrap. Oh, look at that. There's another Charmander. And watch what happens when we play this back. There's Charmanders. Do not call it quits right here because this does not look super good. It, it's just constant speed. We want a little variation here, okay? So what we're gonna do is open up Spline. This is how you change the graph for whatever keyframes you have so it doesn't look linear. Make sure you check transform and sometimes you won't get lucky and you'll see the keyframe. So just hit zoom to fit and it will uh, show you the keyframes. Anyways, I like that last one. And I like to start off by just dragging it out. And we don't want this sort of curve right here because watch what ends up happening. We don't want him to speed up and then slow down. We want him fast and then slowing down. So I'm just going to drag this up. So now we got a nice little curve. Whoa, he is flying. The last thing we got to do is add some motion blur to this. Because like I said earlier, the faster something's moving, the more motion blur you have. And it's really easy to do in that transform node. If you go to settings, guess what? Motion blur, baby. Now, uh, the default quality, it's okay if you're still messing around. But once you got it locked in, I like to dial it up all the way to 10. And you're going to have some like realistic looking motion blur. Look at that. And there you go. You just made the sliding clone effect. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, but you could also join the Discord and either myself or one of the members can help you out. If there's a certain effect you wanna see, just let me know. Anyways, I gotta go.